Dear viewers, Drishti IAS welcomes you to the new series of Simplified. Today's topic of discussion is agriculture and technology. The dimensions we are going to cover are introduction, terms related to agriculture, importance of technology in agriculture, and government initiatives. So let's begin with the brief introduction first. Agriculture is defined as the art, science and business of producing crops and livestock for economic purposes. After the green revolution, there has been an increasing trend in the use of machines in farm operations. This has led to the mechanization of the Indian agriculture. Punjab, Haryana, West Uttar Pradesh, river valleys of Andhra and Tamil Nadu are major agriculturally mechanized areas in India. Agriculture plays a vital role in the Indian economy. Over 70% of the rural households depend on agriculture. Agriculture is an important sector of the Indian economy as it contributes about 17% to the total GDP and provides employment to around 58% of the population. The share of agriculture in GDP increased to 19.9% in 2020-21. to Now let's discuss about terms related to agriculture. First is Zero Budget Natural Farming. It is a method of chemical-free agriculture drawing from traditional Indian practices. It was originally promoted by agriculturalist Subhash Palekar, who developed it in the mid-1990s as an alternative to the Green Revolution's methods that are driven by chemical fertilizers and pesticides and intensive irrigation. It is a unique model that relies on agroecology. It aims to bring down the cost of production to nearly zero and return to a pre-Green Revolution style of farming. It claims that there is no need for expensive inputs such as fertilizers, pesticides and intensive irrigation. Benefits of zero-budget natural farming include with the rising cost of external inputs that is fertilizers and pesticides which is the leading cause of indebtedness and suicide among farmers. Since in ZBNF, there is the need to spend money or take loans for external inputs, the cost of production could be reduced and farming made into a zero-budget exercise. This could break the debt cycle for many small farmers and help to envisage the doubling of farmers' income by 2022. It suits all crops in all agroclimatic zones. Citing the benefits of ZBNF, Andhra Pradesh rolled out an ambitious plan to become India's first state to practice 100% natural farming by 2024. Next is vertical farming. Vertical farming is the practice of growing crops indoors on vertically inclined surfaces under artificial conditions of light and temperature. It is done in a controlled environment with the aim of optimizing plant growth. It aims at higher productivity in smaller spaces and uses soil-less methods such as hydroponics, aquaponics and aeroponics. Vertical farming allows to produce crops with 70-95% to less water than required for normal cultivation. Crops are resistant to weather disruptions because of their placement indoors. Lettuces, tomatoes and green crops can be produced through this practice. Japan has been one of the early pioneers in the vertical farming. It holds the largest share in the global vertical farming market. Spread is one of the companies that makes a huge profit out of vertical farming. It annually produces almost 11 million heads of lettuce from its factory in Kyoto. Now countries like Denmark and the USA are also taking up vertical farming. By 2050, around 80% of the world population is expected to live in urban areas 
and the growing population will lead to an increased demand for food. The efficient use of vertical farming may perhaps play a significant role in preparing for such a challenge. Next is hydroponics. Hydroponics is the method of growing plants without the involvement of soil. Here plant roots are submerged in magnesium, nitrogen, potassium, calcium etc. These solutions support roots, improving chances of higher yield and reducing dependence on water. Studies have shown that there have been 11 times yield compared to conventional farms at a cost of 13 times less water. Thus, hydrophonics is the most widely used method in vertical farming. Benefits include The hydroponic farming technology with closed water loop systems is a viable option for farmers with limited access to land and water. The significance of soil-less systems increases many folds when it comes to urban and peri-urban areas where the arable land is polluted. Lower and more efficient resource consumption allows this alternative farming technique to be adopted by a variety of stakeholders. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, that is FAO, the vegetable yield of soilless systems is 20 to 25 percent higher than in traditional systems as the number of plants per square meter is higher. Next is aquaponics. Aquaponics is a system that combines hydroponics and aquaculture within a closed system. There are three biological components in the aquaponics process, fishes, plants and bacteria. The system represents a symbiotic relationship between the plants and the fishes. The fish faces is used as fertilizer for the plants and the plants clean the water for the fish. Moving on to the advantages, two agricultural products, fish and vegetables, are produced from one nitrogen source, that is fish food. Such a system also prevents aquaculture waste from polluting nearby watersheds. Aquaponic farming does not involve pesticides or herbicides, as these chemicals may kill fish. In this system, the fish faces is the nutrient-rich fertilizer for the plants. Aquaponics can result in huge water savings contrasted with a garden grown on the ground that is 80 to 90 percent water savings. An aquaponics system can be set on any scale. It can be as small as an aquarium and as big as a greenhouse commercial farm. Next is aeroponics. Aeroponics does not use mediums like solid or liquid. Instead, it uses air to grow plants. A liquid solution is used in air where the plants are located, through which the plants absorb nutrients. It is the most suited method as it requires neither water nor soil and requires no growing medium. Advantages include the water usage in the system reduces by 98% and fertilizer usage by 60%. Pesticides are fully eliminated as the absence of soil reduces chances of diseases. The aeroponically grown plants can be harvested three times faster and the yields are more consistent. As nutrients are sprayed onto the plants and roots, there is plenty of oxygen and other gases in the growing chamber for roots to absorb. Farming in a confined space gives the farmer control over pests and locust attacks and sudden heat waves. Now let's discuss about importance of technology in agriculture. Technology in agriculture affects many areas of agriculture such as fertilizers, pesticides, seed technology, etc. Biotechnology and genetic engineering have resulted in pest resistance and increased crop yields. Mechanization has led to efficient tilling, harvesting and a reduction in manual labor. Irrigation methods and transportation systems have improved. Processing machinery has reduced wastage, etc. 
and the effect is visible in all areas. New Age Technologies focus on robotics, precision agriculture, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology and more. Some technological advancements that have innovated agriculture are Improved productivity from mechanization of agriculture To reduce manual labor and make the processes faster, combined harvesters are finding greater use. Indian farming is characterized by small land holdings and the need is to partner with others to take advantage of modern machines. Climate weather prediction through artificial intelligence A major advance in agriculture is the use of artificial intelligence that is AI. Modern equipment and tools based on AI enable data gathering and assist in precision farming and informed decision making. Drones, remote sensors and satellites gather 24-7 data on weather patterns in and around the fields, providing farmers with vital information on temperature, rainfall, soil, humidity, etc. Resilient crops developed via use of biotechnology. Agriculture refers to a wide resource of methodologies that include traditional breeding methods, genetic engineering and development of microorganisms for agriculture. Genetic engineering uses the understanding of DNA to identify and work with genes to increase crop resistance to pests and the development of high yielding varieties also makes improvements to livestock. Next is improving farm yields and supply chain management use big data. The collection and compilation of data and its further processing to make it useful for decision making or problem solving are expanding the way big data functions. Big data is slated to play a major role in smart farming and the benefits percolate across the entire supply chain and the markets. Agriculture is becoming larger and it depends on a large number of variables. Next is digital agriculture. It is ICT that is information and communication technologies and data ecosystems to support the development and delivery of timely targeted information and services to make farming profitable and sustainable while delivering safe, nutritious and affordable food for all. Examples are digital and wireless technologies for data measurement, weather monitoring, robotics or drone technology, etc. Benefits are, it increases agriculture productivity, prevents soil degradation, reduces chemical application in crop production, efficient use of water resources, etc. Now lastly, let's discuss about the government initiatives. To boost the farm mechanization in the country, a special dedicated scheme, Submission on Agricultural Mechanization, that is SMAM, was introduced by the Government of India in 2014-15. The scheme aims at reaching the unreached by making farm machines accessible and affordable for the small and marginal farmers, that is SMFs, through establishment of custom hiring centers or CHCs, creating hubs for high-tech and high-value farm equipment and farm machinery banks. Distribution of various subsidized agricultural equipment and machines to individual farmers is also one of the activities under the scheme. Creating awareness among stakeholders through demonstration of machine operations and skill development of farmers and youth and others are also the components of SMAM. The performance testing and certification of machines at designated testing centers located all over the country are ensuring farm machinery qualitatively, effectively and efficiently. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.